first of all, don't worry about the word God. Doesn't matter. Whatever works for you. Higher being, as you said, absolutely. Soul. Spirit. Love. It's all God. So don't worry about that. You know, as a mother or a father or a husband or a wife or whoever it may be, that you've got a loved one. If that loved one calls you something other than your name, a baby can't say mom or dad or anything and just says, blah, 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 blah. You say, look, 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 he's saying mom. Right? Kids saying nothing. Kids babbling. Look, 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 he just said dad. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what word they use. One says mom. One says mommy. One says mama. One says something else. One says honey, one says sweetheart, one says darling. What you know is they're calling me with love. Somebody says to you, darling, you're not going to say, call me sweetheart or I ain't coming. <laughs> I only answered a sweetheart. I mean, can you imagine? What, could, could you imagine a mother, you know, saying, it's mommy. Not mom, not ma, not mama, it's mommy. Say it or you get nothing. So if, if we as humans are capable of understanding that someone's calling us with love regardless of what name they use, surely God is. So don't worry about the name. Whatever feels comfortable to you. Then you came as you said, for yoga, but mostly physically, physical. But spirituality has hit you like a ton of bricks, which I love because one of the questions that comes up so frequently in here at big yoga conferences, you know, all over, is does it bother you that so many people do yoga only for the physical benefit. And I always say no, because the power of yoga is so strong that regardless of what people get into it for, if they do it sincerely, it's going to touch them, just like meditation. If you get into meditation, even if it's because your cardiologist said do it, if you do it sincerely, not counting the seconds till your daughter's happy that you've sat long enough. But you really do it sincerely. It's going to transform you. And so whether you get into yoga for your knee, for your hip, for your waistline, for your neck, whatever it may be, as long as you do it sincerely and fully, yeah, it is going to change you. And yes, yeah, sometimes it does feel like you've been hit by a ton of bricks. I... I frequently share personally that people talk about the touch of God, but for me also, it felt like I had been hit over the head with a baseball bat. You have a few days left, as you said. A few days is a lot of time. A lot of time. Huge transformations can take place. There's no one right place to start, except deep within. Because here's what we do know about transformation, about anything powerful. It has to touch you very, very, very deeply while it's happening in order for it to last. So people come and they have deep and beautiful experiences of peace, of joy, of oneness, of spirituality, of connection, go back and say, you know, my peace left me as, as soon as I got home. My joy left me as soon as I got home. And what that means is, if that happens, is it means that the peace and the joy was not very deep while you were here. It means that it was the same sort of peace and joy that one would get from just being on holiday not having to punch a time clock, not having to do the things we do in our day-to-day -day life that cause stress. 
if that's where our peace comes from, yeah, it's going to dissipate as soon as you get back. In order for it to last, it has to transform me while I'm here. And a few days is a lot of time. So what I would say is, focus on allowing yourself to be broken open while you're here. Sit still. Sit quiet. Allow Mother Ganga to work her magic. Allow that to hit you very, very deeply. And when it does, sit with it. Don't go into the brain of what did that experience mean? How am I going to describe it? What are the words? Don't worry about naming it. The minute we get into our brains, we've lost the experience in our beings. And so in these days, allow yourself to be transformed. Allow yourself to let go as you sit on the banks of Ganga, as you breathe. Allow before your eyes, behind your closed eyes or open eyes, either way, to come before you all of the stuff that you are holding on to, all of the stuff that you identify as, your history, your identities, your relationships, all of the stuff that keeps you stuck, some expectation that you have of someone, some grudge that you have, some pain from the past, some way of identifying that keeps you stuck, I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not pretty enough, I'm not rich enough, I'm not this enough or that enough. Any way that you identify. Or the flip side, I'm the best, I'm the smartest. Because interestingly, we're stuck both ways. The ego works the whole spectrum. So any of those identities, let them go. Literally, breathe them out to Ganga. Take her water in your hands and just with each breath, breathe them out into the water and offer it back to her. Take another handful of water. Breathe something else out into it. Offer it back to her. And allow yourself to just do that and do that, and do that. As I said last night, you're here for a reason. You don't have to know what it is, but she knows. All you have to do is stay open, and stay still, and stay courageous, so that when that's happening, as that happens, we don't run away inside. A lot of times what happens as we're having those incredible experiences start to begin is the ego panics. It just panics. It happens in meditation sometimes. I'm going to die. I've had people ask me literally, will I die in meditation? You know, it seems like I'm going so far. I asked Pooja Swamiji this actually one time because in meditation for me a lot of times the breath gets so still, so still that it seems to have stopped. And in that moment I would find myself bringing my awareness back to the breath just to make sure that it was still going. And that if I didn't, if I let myself keep going where I was being pulled in the meditation, that my breath was just going to stop. And it was only out of incredible faith in my guru that when he said, don't worry, I promise you won't stop breathing, that I could let myself do that. And so, and, but this is all the ego. It's the ego in the mind that is so afraid of losing its hold on things. 
It's so afraid of losing its role. And this is where it takes the courage is to not jump into the mind, because that's the game the ego plays. Oh, we're going to just analyze this. Wasn't that beautiful? Was that, was that a blue color? I saw a green color. No, it was kind of aquamarine, I would say. Um, you know, and the, the ego, well, what shape exactly was that? What's coming before me? Oh, is that Krishna before my eyes? No, it looked, looked more like Shiva. No, actually, look. This is the brain being overrun by the ego knowing that if it can bring you into analysis, it's bringing you out of the experience. There will be plenty of time to think about it later. You'll remember it. That which is important, you'll remember it. Don't worry. And so don't, don't worry about trying to understand it in this moment or analyze it in this moment. Allow yourself to just be there with it in this moment. And Gunga will take care of the rest. Yeah. yeah. And before you go, before you go, we'll talk about what to take back and how to go back. But for now, don't think about going back. Think about the days you've got here left.